Hello, everybody, and welcome. It is right or right, not just Australia, the globe, NBL Overtime. Hashtag NBL Overtime to get involved. There it is. Hit us up wherever you might be, and you want to talk a little free agency, a little NBL hoops into the off-season. That is dapper, man. Thanks, Hello man. to you. Homicide in the house. It, that, is, that, is, that is sweet. Thank you, man. Is that a, it's a full kit as well. It's a full like kit. It. You ready? I'm ready. You ready? Because we are a person down. Liam Santa Maria, free agency, breaking news, tore his meniscus. He's out. Pete Hawley in the house, man. How you doing? It's good, man. It's been a while. Super sub. Hope Liam's doing all right. We hope he's doing okay from his recovery. And I'm not sure he was going to body fit, he was telling me. Yeah. I don't know whether that led to it or mm-hmm. he was just pushing himself a little harder. He was looking good. He was. Hopefully he's feeling good and he can get back here as soon as possible. Stay away from the squat rack. I tried to tell him he didn't Nothing listen. good comes from it. That's also true. Now, if you watched last week's show, I'm Zipper too. I said mm-hmm. Luke Travers will stay at Perth. And Keanu Pinder won't be in the NBL. It all changed the moment uh, this show finished, pretty much. Luke Travis said, hey, I want greater opportunity. But we're going to start with Keanu Pinder, who really tore it up again last year. Back-to-back most improved. He's over in Europe right now doing his thing. And the Perth Wildcats were able to get him. Homicide, this is exciting for the Red Army. This is an incredible get. He is a premier power forward in the league before he was injured. He was in my top three for league MVP. Um, made history as the first player ever in the NBL to go back-to-back most improved. And uh, it's a fantastic get and a great um, signing uh, for the Red Army. It is. It, for Let's take apart all about his mm. game and what he does well and how incredible his last two seasons was. What did Perth need the last two years? This. Rebounding. Mm-hmm. That man hustles hard. He's an extreme athlete. If you don't put a body on him, he's going to go and chase the, the board. He's going to put the put-back dunks, little dump-off passes. Perth were really good when Nick Kay was crashing the boards. John Mooney was getting after the rebounds. They didn't have that really big focal point down low. Now they have it, and now you just it's all about filling the complementary pieces around Bryce Cotton and Keanu Pinder. So it's massive for them, and it's exactly the way they want to kick off free agency really soon after that Luke Travers news broke because the Red Army wasn't too thrilled with that. Now you got something to be a bit excited about. The thing is, well, we talk about th- we talk about this a lot, right? If you build around your Australian or New Zealand type players, it gives you a leg up, right? Now, Bryce Cotton is Bryce Cotton, so you already know you have the best player in the game in one of the import slots. Now, Sydney have done it particularly well the last couple of years building around the Australians. Last year, Xavier Cooks. And now the fact is that Perth are doing exactly that. Bryce Cotton is there, locked on in. This is a great pickup. This is, this is great for the way I think John really wants to play his style of basketball as well. It's actually, it's weird you say like that because you're right. We've seen notoriously along mm. the NBA in recent history, you need a strong Aussie core that you can retain and build with to build the culture to have the success. But Perth, I mean, we'll get onto the citizenship stuff with Bryce and what a shambles that was. But it really is in the last few years, how do we build around Bryce? We yeah. know he's not going anywhere. Mm. He's locked in. He loves being home in Perth. It is his home now with his family. So they're trying to build around Bryce, and that's the smart way to do it. And I think that it's a really good step forward for a year that they want to get back to competing for a title. Uh, outstanding article in the West, and when I say outstanding, very well explained. And the Bryce Cotton citizenship is interesting in the West Australian. If you haven't read it, go check it out. Because it just for a simple person such as myself, it just makes no sense how this whole situation... I reckon this will help. You're going to get I, I, I legitimately, I think there's a real chance now because I think people will start to take notice of what the bloody hell happened and how it worked out that particular way. This is the right way to go about it when you have your back against the wall and it makes no sense to anyone how Bryce Cotton hasn't been able to be citizenship yet. You've been through your wife's season, right? Yeah, it took about eight months. Yeah, uh, she's been yeah. here about the same time as Bryce Cotton, and and we know, we, and Corey, you read it. We were speaking about it yesterday. The article that came out, and for those who, who haven't looked at it, the the summary was there's like a thirty minute period where yeah. he was changing over visas that he was here illegally, and because of that, that he can't get his citizenship. He, he, he was only here illegally because you couldn't leave the country because it was smack bang in the middle of COVID. Yeah. So and look, it's 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 a shocking read <laughs> for is. Bryce Cotton. I felt really sorry for him yeah. reading the article. Because a plain old sucks. But imagine he does get citizenship. Imagine he, they are built around Pinder and Cotton, and all of a sudden they're putting this crew together. Will McDowell White's name is obviously clearly mm. in the conversation when it comes to Perth as well. That'll be interesting. I will say this about Will McDowell White. I, there, there are very certain times in a player's career where you get the opportunity where you have all the leverage. And he has all the leverage, right? If he stays in New Zealand, who I still probably think's the favourite, just... 
You know, if he stays there, he's staying there after being developed and taking that team to a championship series. If he goes to Perth, he's playing side by side with Bryce Cotton, who I have no doubt's picked up the phone and said, hey man, for sure. let's roll this out. If he goes to Brisbane, there's a homecoming of sorts. Tasmania is reported. If yep. he goes there, he's with Scott Roth, and we know what that crew can do. He played himself into a situation at this age where any situation, whatever team he goes to, homicide, it's a good one. No. Right? No? The only team he should be looking at, yeah. if I'm him, yeah. I'm going out west. Really? I'm going to the Wildcats. That's it? 100%. Don't worry about New Zealand. Cut the check, which they have the means to. Yeah. Give him whatever he needs. Mm -hmm. Sign him long term and get him in that jersey. You know why? Why was he able to be so successful in New Zealand? Who are the biggest two ingredients that he had? Barry Brown and Joel Brownlee. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you put him with Perth. Cotton and Pinder. Mm -hmm. Okay, and who do they replace? Barry Brown Jr., Cotton. Brantley, Pinder. Same duo. Yeah. You want to have that success? Get next to those two. I guarantee you it will look the same way. I guarantee you. I, it, you can go get a big import center, right? Mm -hmm. You got your locals sorted, mm -hmm. right? Oh, two yeah. premier locals. Mm -hmm. You go get you an import center that's for real. Rebounding and playing defense, which they lacked, ridiculously lacked last year. It was a joke. You go get that center, game on. Because I tell you this, the Kings, that premier local that they had mm. is cool. in Washington. Yep. This tide can turn quick. It's hard to do it twice. It's damn near impossible to do it three times. Well, it's the next big piece to follow, isn't it, Will McDowell? Why? And you think, because you, you talk about chips, you know, a lot of teams are doing that, whether he goes home to Brisbane. Tassie have emerged now as a, a reasonably strong candidate. Every other team's waiting and see what, what he does and then, OK, what's our backup plan? Because if you are all chips into Will McDowell White and you don't get him, that restructures the whole rest of what yeah. you're trying to put together. So it, it will be interesting to see what happens. I, I still believe New Zealand will be in the driver's seat because he loves Modi Mayo and what they're trying to bring there. And look, Perth, they've got a pretty strong case now. It's You put talent around. Winning is more, is nearly oh. as enticing yeah. as I, check. Imagine trying to guard him. Of course, we, you know, Liam, you, everyone broke down guarding Will McDowell White and the best way to do it in that semi final series and then in that grand final series. To your head, you get the pill out of his hands, you try and take him out of that. You, pick well, imagine it. You've got Keanu Pinder setting that screen and rolling, and you've got Bryce Cotton, the best player in the league, sitting on the other wing. It'd be it's very it's enticing. And don't don't get me wrong, I'm not a Perth Wildcats fan. Have a look at this. We've got Pinder. McDowell White is doing whatever he does, being able to find the open person. Of course, Bryce Cotton listen, step back listen. and bang. If they do get Will McDowell White, I mean I'm not sure where the, the conversation with Brady Manic is, but if you imagine the space in the floor when you've got that shooting in the four spot as well. <laughs> Uh, it, it, no, sure. Brady it, Manic. I'm not bringing Brady Manic back. Not. You know who I go get? Hit me. DJ Ho. Oh, yo, put my, put my, put my, put my camera on. Where my camera at? Where my camera at, man? Where my camera at? Where my camera at? DJ Ho. We seen these highlights. Where my camera at? Oh wow. Hey, 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 hey. Craig Hutchison. Oh. This is Hutchie. for you. Oh no. Hutchy. You want to get the Red Army back? You want to get the Red Army back? Just listen to me. Go get DJ Hogue. Give McDowell, Will McDowell White whatever he need. You're back to the glory days. I promise you. I never steer you wrong. You know I keep it real. You know I keep it 100 with you. I'm telling you what to do. I mean, that's just, the, that's a scary thought if, if you could well, pull that together. Now, if they were to... If, no, because guess what? Guess what? One of them play defense and one don't. I'm not going down that route again Fair with goal. Brady Manick, who plays zero defense. DJ Hogue, I'm going to get. He'd be a, DJ Hogue. Remember what he did against Sydney? No, I'm with you. He's a different I'm, price. I'm like going to another level. He's a different price pack. Yo, listen, I'm going all in. Adelaide went all in, right? Well, you got to uh, take the risk. We'll get to Adelaide. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> they just didn't get the reward. Epic fail, uh, I, but I, they took the risk. I, I respect that. Craig Hutchie, go all the way in, B. I'm, I'm telling you, go all... You can't lose with that. What? Are you going to predict them... If, if they sign McDowell White and DJ Hogue, that's a championship? 100%. <laughs> but, 
The season's one hundred. The season ended last right? week. What? I love it. It's April in the four. bank. <laughs> what date is in it? the bank? Xavier Cooks ain't here no more. <laughs> That's true. That's true. He's now, too big of a factor. Derek Warren Jr. ain't coming back. Let me ask you this. They might have to, look. Is that look, the look, earliest look, prediction look. of all time? Listen. It's, it's and they haven't even got to it yet. I love what Sydney did. Shout out to Sydney. <laughs> but I'm just saying, things change. Yeah, of course. Things change drastic. Mm. So my point is, if Perth are able to do this, that's what I do. Mm. Like, now, the next thing on that is. I'm in the hole. What happens with Perth's history? Me, the, two years, what they've done. Nothing. They still have to figure out, obviously, what's going to happen with like the likes of Mitch Norton and Todd Blanchfield and the talks mm. about them Mitch on the move. On, move, being on the move. And then again, but you're Blanchfield. Saying, so if they get he got to go. If they get chips in and, and say you, we're going after Will McDowell White and they put all their eggs in one basket and he stays in New Zealand, then what? If Mitch Norton's gone and, and everything moves, they'll get a dope import. Yeah, Point I'm guard. sure. I'm sure. But that's what I'm saying. The next big move to fall, which will make the rest of the league start to take place. Is Will McDowell. Just, just quickly, I want to touch on Luke Travers, who, uh, again, nice article, nbl.com.au, seeking further opportunities, made no secret of which majority of players are, are fairly honest and transparent that they want to get to the NBA and his rights are owned by an NBA team in the Cleveland Cavaliers. Were you surprised? Uh, hey, one, were you surprised? No. All right, are you surprised that he's linked? He wants to be the best player on the team. He, he spoke about Bryce Cotton, of course, being, he wants more opportunity. He's being linked to the two Melbourne teams, one of which he'd be teammates of Mitch Creek, who'd be the best player on that team, and the other would be Chris Golding. Are you um, surprised that the Melbourne teams seem to be the front runner, considering what he wanted to do? No, absolutely not. I think it's something that you talk about opportunity but further growth. Mm -hmm. I mean, Mike Kelly was just there with him. Absolutely. And what he can do. He's so versatile that I'm just trying to think, as someone I played under Dean Vickerman, and you look at what Jack White could do and the way they kind of do their defensive structure and the way they play... You kind of see him really fitting into that Dean Vickerman style and continuing to grow his game and being able to be that versatile player and play at the four, play at the uh, backup point guard if we need you to handle the rock as well and do all that and kind of be that focal point for mm. them. So not surprised at all the two Melbourne yeah. teams are leading the charge. I, I want to point this out when I say this. I, I'm not suggesting that Luke Travers wouldn't be a great asset for either of those two teams, but if he wants to be at that time, he's still a kid. I think moving out of Western Australia and maturing a little bit and step, growing. Is he ready to Absolutely. Be that? Well, that's... The the next question, right? And I'm not certain 100% he will be able to showcase mm -hmm. into what would be fairly well-built rosters in those two teams, which is not dissimilar to Perth. Illawarra is probably the great spot for him. Well, here's legitimately. He here's the way he needs to go. Tell me. That's what he wants to do. Well, be the best player. Yep. You either go down to the Ford factory mm -hmm. or you go to Illawarra. Yeah, I'm gone. With you. One or the other, because any of those other teams, mm -hmm. you're not going to be second option. Mm -hmm. You'll be third at best, when, which means what? You're out west. You're, you're, you're gone from the west. Yeah. Now you're, what's this, east? Where, where are we? We're down south, baby. Okay, so you're down <laughs> south <laughs> at the yeah. third option? Same thing. Yeah, yeah. I'm with you. I'm Go with to the you. Ford factory, man. Yeah. The, more, the more I think about it and, and touching it, you've you played pro for so many years. The timing of him leaving at his age after what he's been through, I, I think it's perfect. Like You don't want to wait a couple of years and then say, I wish I left a little mm. earlier. Right, Has right, he le right. He's left at the right time. No, he's definitely left at the yep. right time because, I mean, think about it. He did not have a good year last season. Mm. And the coach has no faith in him. He, he had a so better... It's his second half get. of the year... His second Wasn't half of good the year enough, when he man. became... Probably not. But his second half of the year was vastly improved on the first half. Well, they had, their, they had their issues I overall. So am they did. Talking yeah. about a whole yeah, no, year. And, and fair enough too. They had their issues, and obviously you're gonna. He just got drafted, so there's gonna mm -hmm. be a big magnifying glass. One hundred percent. There was plenty of other issues around him that just didn't help. That, his that's course. also true. In the other teams that have been linked to, I think he won't have those issues. And I think that you know, saying that you want to be the best player on the team, right? Mm. You've had big opportunity last year to show that. Well, you're never going to be the best player on the team with Bryce. But what I'm saying no. is, like, okay, Brady Manick was off and on. Yeah. Those other guys yeah. weren't really consistently showing yeah. up. Fair point. Great opportunity to step in. You didn't show – you're not ready to be the best player on the team. Mm. That's a whole nother different can of worms. Yeah. You're not ready to want. You don't want that – this league is too good. Well, he's not a, he's not a 20 point a night. He's player. not. Yeah, so you can't be the best player. Go ahead, go to Melbourne. Yeah, thank you. I think that's the, the <laughs> Go right. to one of the Melbourne one teams. One of those Melbourne teams links, I think, yeah. the perfect fit for him. Well, if he goes to Melbourne, they might go, and I half alluded to this last week, they might have an All Australian starting five. Who would be the All Australian starting five? I don't know. Well, so how you say that and then say, I don't know? <laughs> well, give Oliver, me something, man. Chris Golding, Luke Travers. Okay, okay. Well, we There's get three to, more spots left. We're going to get to Hook Porty. 
Hook 40? That's Hook 40 is the next start. Yeah. I think he'll come off, he'll come off the, <laughs> I think he'll come off the bench. Good job re-signing him, though. I don't know. I just think it feels tracking that way. And if they're selling to Luke Travers, you're going to be a huge part of this team. You're not going to go and get imports over the top of him and toss him the pill, right? Yeah. If he does end up in Melbourne, I do not know. No idea, but I, I it's what the ref- it's Olg- tracking that way. Let me ask you something. Bolgan says it. What was the start in five when Melbourne United won it the other day with Landau? Landau. JLA. JLA. Jack White. CG and Delhi. No, nah, Delhi, Delhi didn't win it. No, Delhi and, didn't uh, win it. And Shay. Mason Peatling started. Shay Ely. Ma- Ma- I'm telling you, that man. That was all Australian. They went all Aussie and they had That the, was all Aussie, right? And they had the um, uh, Nigerian player off the bench. And I have Caleb Agata. Yeah. Bang. Correct, Agata. Correct, there you correct, go. Correct, correct, correct. You know what okay, I mean? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you're starting, yeah. ah, yeah. 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 starting to warm up. You're starting to warm up. It worked Put the... Put the... Uh, if, the it if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Put the cloud like... Yeah, well, they got... And I'll tell you what. You know, obviously, they're Ben's. Tony, Tony Krebs is signed there. Mm. So, there you okay. go. Okay, nice, okay, okay. Yeah. Quick break. Plenty more NBL overtime next. It is NBL Overtime, get involved, hashtag NBL Overtime, and this is our man Xavier Cooks just going to work early in what's going to be a long NBA career. He looks real good in a Wizards jersey, but it does now open up the conversation. You made the perfect point a couple of months ago about, hey, if Xavier Cooks ends up in the NBA, the right guy to replace him is Keanu Pinder. Continue to do build around the Australians. That's now off the table. Sydney got a lot to do, Homicide. Where do you, what are you focused on if you're Chris Pongrass and, and co right now? Well, as I said last week when he was on the show, I'm a fan and he gets it done. So it may not be a local to fill that spot. Mm. Plenty of imports. Plenty of imports you can go get. And as a matter of fact, here we go. I got a list of names. Oh, hello. Here we go. Don't worry about four or five positions, but here's just the names Hassan Whiteside, mm-hmm. Dwight Howard. Mm hmm. Tyreek Evans, maybe DeMarcus Cousins, right? Trey Burke, Isaiah Thomas, Lance Stevenson. I'm just giving you some names of some NBA stars who are no longer active in the NBA. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a few reasons guys aren't active, right? Some guys are at a certain age. You know, the NBA's gone younger. So in terms of those gentlemen's names that I just named, they might be considered a dinosaur in the NBA. That doesn't mean these guys can't still go at a high level, sure. right? Hassan Whiteside's in Puerto Rico playing. Dwight Howard went to Taiwan, as we know. Tyreek Evans is in Puerto Rico. That league, the biggest selling point, again, is do you want to get back to the NBA? That's all you ask these players. Come here, then. If, you, if the answer is no, well, we're, end of discussion. Yeah. But if the answer is yes, this is the proven ground for an opportunity to come here, you kill and do work, You'll be right back there. That's all you got to do. And when you post this, we spoke about this yesterday. The those players he listed, it's not all about money right now. No, so, it ain't. They 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 got the bread. And you still you still gonna get paid hands. Out of all those names, if you're talking about Sydney, the one that I would be going after, if just over those names, is Trey Burke, because they get had their success with that elite import point guard, mm-hmm. Jalen Adams, Derek Walton Jr. If the, if you can't get either of those two you got to go down that same path. I have absolutely no worries in the world with all the pieces moving around that Sydney won't put together another Their roster will be, they, roster will be legit. And, and don't forget, they, they have the luxury of having Bogan in the corner, of mm-hmm. having though, picking up the phone and saying, hey, man, we, we'll get you here, we'll do that, uh, in terms of NBA fringe players and stuff like that. I have no worries. I know they lost Xavier Cooks. They still need a couple of big local signings. Bull Quall being linked to go there. Just to keep that, that ticking over, no worries at all that they'll still be contending. Let's touch on Cairns, because the unfortunate reality is we all kind of thought Keanu Pinder might leave the Taipans, and then it became a real prospect last week or early on Sunday when it was announced. What do they do? You mentioned Bull Quoll there, who is a very hot free agent. The way he plays, 3 and D type of player, perfect to sit as a starter in this league against a high-quality Australian or import. What do you do if you're Adam Ford? Look, it's tough because the fans, you see a lot of comments and they, they get devastated because mm. they're, the, they're the team, that's the organisation that has seen the growth of these players, like Keanu Pinder and, and players in the past, move on. I mean, we saw Melo Trimble went there for a little bit, then moved on, and uh, it sucks, I'm sure, as a fan. But Adam Ford commented on the Instagram post to Keanu Pinder saying, 
go on and, and continue to grow. Like, he's called it the factory. Yeah. It's, it's for youngsters and it's for guys who want second chances mm. to ball out and then go on to what... Obviously not ideal to go in the league again to another place, but potentially the NBA, potentially where you want to get to. So for Adam Ford, I'm sure it would be frustrating to not be able to keep these players, but as a, as a, a player's coach that he is and he has those relationships, he would feel really proud to see them go on True. to this next level, to, to make a bag, to do all that. So it, it sucks as a fan, but just know the while Adam Ford's there, the way they play, the way he's got that culture humming, your team's going to be fighting. It's going to be fun to watch and they're going to fight every game. His actual selling point lends to losing guys when they get better. And that, that, that kind of sucks, but I also think it's the right way to go about it because if he continues to do what he does, he, I have said on this show, and it's hard to argue it, he's the best development coach in the country. Facts. And Keanu Pinder's a perfect example of that. And they've been able to do really well with their imports the last couple of years. So uh, by selling it, it means they are competitive. They have sniffs at maybe winning a championship like they did in the season. They'll always gone. have that. But, yeah, but then they lose. And I understand Facts. where the fans get frustrated. It's a... Just goes around in circles. I don't even think he's the best development really? coach in the country. I just think he's one of the best coaches in the country. Oh, great. Imagine, oh, sure. imagine if he had a budget. Mm. What would it be like? You he's, know what I mean? Still... What would it be if there, if you can do that with a shoestring budget? Yeah. That's impressive. He's still getting youngsters even with a you, blank, you, yeah, blank you, budget. You know what I mean? Like, he's just going against, he's going to get the young cats like, look. Mm -hmm. Come through, I'm gonna let you rock. It's, it's Moneyball, really, for it the Thai And it's fun to watch, but as I said, you've got he pays or whatever that he has to do for young guys who are desperate and they're gonna take every single minute or second on the floor to play like their last and they're gonna be a fun mm -hmm. style of play. So they'll always be around the mark because that's the culture he's now built there. Yo, who's signing my man Ben Air, man? It's an interesting. Who situation? is signing Ben Air? Well, they popped up in the West. There's a couple of little rumors about that mm -hmm. as well. Word, man. Let's hurry up and get that done. Well, that, that would be dependent on if Mitch Norton does, in fact, Correct. leave the Wildcats. If it was, Ben Air would probably just slide on in. I, I think it's a really fascinating next three or four days. Like, fascinating because there are so many names linked. Of course, South East Melbourne Phoenix are probably going to get busy shortly. They've got their coach. Congratulations. Big shout-out to Mike Kelly, who you know particularly mm. well, part of that championship team uh, in 2018. So he gets an opportunity. Mitch Creek, it, it, it's, it's easier. We've said this a lot. It's easier when you've got a superstar Aussie in your lineup, and, and Melbourne, every year you have Mitch Creek and Chris Golden lean back on, and away they go. I love the signing more for Mike Kelly because that it was five-year anniversary of the 2018 yeah. Championship Series, but that was our assistant coaches were Simon Mitchell yep. and Mike Kelly. Simon yeah. Mitchell built up the community, the, everything about the Phoenix, did an absolutely terrific job. I know they didn't win a title, but they were a new franchise. Absolutely. And now Mike Kelly gets to come in going home back to where he was doing it all. It's perfect. It is absolutely perfect. And now I think they're going to be able to put together a really strong squad. South East Melbourne Magic. He was a star for them in the mid-90s. And he's back coaching uh, the reincarnation of them all these years later. A quick break. Yes or no? Ooh. Next. NBL Overtime is what we do. And that's how you get in contact with us. Hashtag NBL Overtime. All our socials. Yes or no, are you ready? Let's do it. No stinger. Still no, no stinger. stinger. No, no stinger. Still no stinger. Can you believe it? They go, they're going to give one Absolutely. Give Absolutely. One. Hey, is Reese Vega hugely underrated pickup? Uh, yes. Should a team look at Mojave King? No. Will Ryan Brockoff be at Phoenix? No. I loved your post about, you know, the, the imports and all the rest of it, but did you really have to do a topless? <laughs> yo, let me tell you what happened. Yo. I was inspired. I woke up out of the bed just thinking hoops. I'm like, yo, let's do it. Okay. Yeah, he's got a newborn as well. What are you waking up from? I don't even <laughs> yeah. sleep. In the yeah, Gabby sleeps good, man. Gabby sleeps. Hey, should the Bullets or the NBL make sure that Harry Froling's looked after financially? It looks like he's going to have to spend, a, you know, 12 months on the sidelines. Should the Bullets or the NBL, even though they're probably not legally obliged to, should they try and look after him? Are you including the APA? Closer? Yeah, I'll include that as well. Yes, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Hey, should the champion, the NBL champion, have first rider refusal at hosting Christmas Day? Hmm. No. No? Okay. Well, we see a couple of NBA, a Christmas NBA games. I, I, I think there's a legitimate chance we will. I think that would be a bad... there, there got to be a doubleheader. But it has uh, to be. Schedule coming out soon. We'll find it. has yeah. to be a doubleheader. Right, should, we, should we start with the grand final rematch? We can all agree on that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. Not wait till round 10. Oh, imagine. Yeah. I mean, down wide goes to Perth. He'll pump up that rivalry 
even more going Ooh. forward. <laughs> Love oh, it. Will. Sign already, yeah. Will. Come Please. on, Hachi. <laughs> Hachi. Hashtag MLI. <laughs> See you next week. Later.